Are the bangs banging today? <laughs> if you haven't watched my home update, I got bangs, kind of. Kind of. I don't know how to style them yet. And when I look into the viewfinder, they look really dark compared to the rest of my hair. So just, just let me learn. They will improve. I know I'm going to be editing this video and being like, God damn it. Like move that piece or something. Anyways, welcome <laughs> to uh, my yearly roundup of stuff we will not be doing in the new year. Interior stuff we will not be participating in in 2024. Um, well, mainly me. And I say we because that's why you're on this channel, I guess. You also won't be participating or do whatever you want. But also what's fun is that I got... One thing from a lot of creators on this app, on this app, on YouTube, <laughs> a lot of creators on YouTube, I am, we're kind of friends because the interior design space is kind of small. So, you know, I'm friends with them and I DM'd a group of people and I was like, give me one thing. You will not be participating in the new year interior design wise. And uh, so they sent me some. So we got what I won't be doing and what other creators won't be doing and then what you won't be doing. So a lot of things that we will not be doing. And they're one of those bangs. I swear I'm emotionally stable. I saw, you know, I have seen the things where it's like you get bangs when you're in a crisis. But honestly, like I just got out of my crisis. I was emotionally unstable and then I got bangs and I got a tattoo I was like, okay, I guess I'm I'm good now. I can like make risky decisions. Bangs, tattoo, painted bathroom. So, all right, let's get started. Things we will not, no, not things. Interior design trends. We will not be participating in the new year. 2024, it's going to be a good one. One thing that I will not be doing in the new year, well, I won't be able to do this because I don't own a space to even do this, but in my opinion, something that we all should not be doing in the new year is gutting full spaces. Obviously, sometimes you have to gut a full space, especially if the building's really old and nothing is salvageable, you have to gut it. But if you're going into a home that has some outdated features, I don't think you should gut everything. I think there is always something you can keep, whether it's, you know, maybe just like the middle island or one of the wooden cabinets or the knobs or the faucet, there's always something or at least a few things that you should keep to the original space, unless it's like extremely bad. But we are no longer going to be doing full guts. <laughs> Speaking of guts, I love Olivia Rodrigo and the album Guts. I'm really into, uh, what's that song right now? Love is embarrassing. I like Olivia Rodrigo. I'm 31 and I like Olivia Rodrigo, okay? It's fine. Her music is so good and she's actually so talented. You should watch her Tiny Desk concerts. If you don't know her, watch her Tiny Desk concerts and you'll be like, oh yeah, we love her. So yeah, we're not going to be gutting, doing any full guts. <laughs> okay. TV-centered rooms. That's not a TV room. I don't think any room should be centered around a TV. And if it is, I think there's just ways to go about it. For example, in my living room, I did not put the TV above the fireplace. I actually shaped my furniture so that the TV's on this side. So when you walk in, it's not a TV-centered room. The TV's still there, but it actually kind of looks fine because it's not, you know, the center of attention. I will be mounting the TV and putting a piece of art over it because that's just what I want to do. But we will no longer be doing TV-centered rooms. I will... I don't know how to phrase this. I or we? And now for our first guest feature, uh, Nick Lewis, my good friend Nick Lewis. I've actually been friends with Nick for a while now just through YouTube, and I'm trying to convince him, well, he said he would, come out to Los Angeles. Um, and I should have, you know, in the future, I should get, like, videos. We should do, like, video calls with everybody. But for the time's sake, they sent me in what they're not going to be doing. And you should go watch Nick's videos because he has a ton of stuff that you shouldn't be doing. And we should follow all of his rules. The first trend, I need to hire this up. Put this on my glass of water, maybe. The first trend that Nick will not be partaking in is the all marble bathroom, which I obviously 100% agree on. He sent me these example images where I was like, where did you, where did you even source this? <laughs> where do you even find an image like this? Who's doing this? So yeah, the all 
marble bathroom. Obviously, there are some instances where it's okay. I think like a vintage e old marble bathroom is good, but an all marble or all quartz bathroom, it's just sterile and it's that hotel vibe, which I guess if you like that, then do it. Sure. Sounds pricey though. So if you watch my channel, you know that trends go in and out. You just have to be picky about the ones you want to participate in. And you kind of have to eye and do your research on what trends are going to be okay when they go out of style. Because there are a ton of trends that come in and they leave and they still will look good. For example, I personally think floating shelves are very trendy, but I think they never will go out of style. I think you can have floating shelves and yeah, maybe it's not like as desired. Maybe you want to change your mind to have something more enclosed, but the floating shelves will still look good. So that's where you have to like really understand and do your research. Basically just watch my channel <laughs> or Nick Lewis or any of these other people that I'm going to talk about. This isn't necessarily a trend, but something I just think we should change in the new year or whenever, when you're starting to decorate a new place or if you're deciding which room to do next when decorating, I think your bedroom should be first over everything. I didn't do that myself when I moved into this place. I actually did my bedroom last and once it was done, I completely regretted it. I was like, I should have done this so much earlier. It is so important to have that space, especially if you have kids or you live with someone. I don't even live with someone. And once I completed the bedroom, I was like, oh, this is really important to go to bed and wake up in a space that you like. So bedroom is now number one when decorating your home. My parents didn't do that at all. They actually never really got to decorating their bedroom because that's just who they are. They love their children very much. So we all got to decorate our bedrooms. And then we did like, you know, the first floor or whatever. And I say we because I really did, you know, help my parents a lot. My eighth grade career report was to be an interior designer, which is interesting because then I just didn't do that actually until later. Well, I'm not even an interior designer, but I went into interiors like a year and a half after college. So I guess whatever. Anyways, my parents didn't do that and they didn't decorate their, their bedroom. And I just think, especially if you have kids or live with someone, I think your bedroom needs to, to feel complete. It's like a, a place to get away. I live by myself, so I don't really like it doesn't really make sense for me because I can hang out anywhere. But when I got my bedroom, when I got my bedroom, when my bedroom felt good, I felt better. So bedroom number one, I, that this is a little off topic, but just just throwing it in there. <laughs> Do you all know Matt King? He used to be in the vlog squad. I don't know if that like exists necessarily anymore, but he has a podcast with some of his friends from that time. But Matt and I have become friends because he secretly loves interior design so I think he found me on TikTok and weird weirdly I am good friends with his cousin it just so happens so now Matt and I are friends and his wife Patricia they came to the the was pop-up and they've just been very supportive of my uh my ventures but anyways Matt has great taste and so does Patricia so I asked Matt I was like Matt what is one trend you will uh not be participating in in 2024 and at first he misread my text and actually sent me something he likes in interior design which was this cool wall unit thing so i decided to share it because i was like this is this is pretty cool and was explaining to me that it's kind of like your junk drawer up on a wall and he uses it all the time so throwing that in there but anyways and then i was like matt no i <laughs> i actually need something that you're not going to be doing and he said glass dining tables which i actually agree on because <laughs> he made a funny comment he was like i don't want to like be able to see your crotch basically when you're sitting at the dining table, which definitely makes sense. But also I just feel like glass tables are really difficult to style. And when you put items on them, I just don't feel like they look as good. It is however dependent on your space because sometimes you do need glass, especially like a coffee table. Sometimes you do need glass to kind of open up the space. And sometimes a dining table that is made of glass is good, but it wouldn't be my first choice to be honest, really ever a glass table. I just feel like Items don't look as nice on it. Kate Leonard, <laughs> my bestie, who's always on this channel, um, I asked her, I said, Kate, what is 
one trend you will not be participating in next year. And she said, actually, how do you pronounce this? Zeliga? Is that really how you pronounce it? Whatever. This tile. Kate said she doesn't like it. She thinks that it's becoming too trendy and kind of turning into, you know, the subway tile, which is interesting because I do feel like a few videos ago, I was like, do this instead of subway tile. So I do agree with her. I kind of take it back that you, you know, it's, it depends. I do think this tile is also one of those things that it's trendy, but it's not going to be bad when it goes out of style. It's the same thing as like subway tile. It's like, this isn't the worst thing in the world. When the trend passes, it actually can enter into a more timeless area like subway tile. Like there are kitchens done in a very timeless way. It just really depends on like all of the other decor around it. So, but yeah, Kate's not going to be doing that tile. Not that she's even going to be tiling anything. So there is that. Another trend, I guess this isn't a trend again. Another area of interior design or decor that... I will not be participating in and I've never participated in, honestly, is, <laughs> this is actually very interesting, keeping my furniture very pristine. I personally like when my furniture is super worn in. I want you to dance on my kitchen table. I don't even have a kitchen table, but I want you to stand up on my couch. Obviously, don't break it, but I want you to leave a watermark on my table. It's just, that's just, I just like that. I like when things feel like people have been there. I like when things are used to an extent. Obviously, you don't want to like ruin your stuff. But, you know, next year, maybe just, you know, when you have a little cocktail, allow the people to stand up on the chair. You can still tell your kids not to like color on the walls. You get the idea. Caroline Winkler, my good old YouTube gal. I miss her. Hi, Caroline, if you're watching. Um, I'm going to send you the tote. I haven't responded to your text, but I'm going to send you a tote. Oh, by the way, if you haven't gotten yourself a tote, I do have some left and you could go buy them now. Otherwise, I'm going to sell the extras at the Chicago pop-up this summer. Anywho, Caroline, I will be sending you the dumpling per your request. But I asked Caroline, I said, what trend are you not going to be participating in in 2024? And I really like what she said because it's very much so up my alley. I would agree with this 100%. Silly shape overload. It's a very urban outfitters type trend. And I think people went a little crazy with it. Obviously, the arches and stuff, I think that has passed. But I do think you're still seeing too many silly shapes around your home. And obviously, if that's your style, do your thing. But I do think it kind of, you know, makes it look like a little playroom sometimes. It's actually like the opposite of my style. I actually really dislike this type of style. And Caroline said, yes, you know, maybe like one or two items is fine. But it does make the space feel young and confusing. She says she gets confused by that. I don't think does Caroline even have a silly shape in her house. No, couldn't name one. Builder great apartments are are out in 2024 <laughs> obviously they're fine you can you can make do with what you have but if you're searching for a place I do suggest finding places with character and warmth and I don't love that I'm convincing people to do this because it's taking places I want off of the market not that I'm necessarily moving I'm, I'm not moving actually but builder grade people need to stop renting those places so that People stop building those places. Even around my area, I've seen multiple apartment complexes popping up that are just like builder grade, whatever. But I guess, you know, they need more housing here and then the prices are going to, you know, all of that. So I don't know what we can do as a whole to stop this. Remember Liv from Able Shop. She was featured on Check Out This Fucking Home. We are also friends. We are also going to be working together on the Chicago pop-up. She's going to do vintage stuff. And Kate and I are going to do another round of pillows, I think. I think. This is so far planted. It's December, and this pop-up won't be till June. But anyways, I asked Liv. I said, Liv, I really love her style. So I'm like, what, what are you not going to be doing in 2024? She said, light wood, which I already agree. You know, I've never really been into this type of wood. I do think there's times 
where it can look good. And wood is one of the main things that go in and out of style. I think whatever you do wood-wise is going to be fine. That's the thing with with wood. <laughs> wood, it's, it's going to go in and out. It's kind of the same thing with gold and silver. Both of those elements are going to have their times and they'll always come back around. But personally for me and Liv, my friend Liv, I don't think I'll ever participate in that. And I don't think she would either. She likes dark wood, she said, and as do I, as do I. She also said she will not be participating in the large kitchen. And I've talked about that before quite a bit, that I love a small kitchen. My parents have a small kitchen from their check out this fucking home tour. I'm really, really blasting out. Check out this video. Check out this person. It's fine. I like it. That's why I'm here. But anyways, my parents have a small kitchen. I just like a tiny kitchen. I think it's fun. And I think when you have people over... The kitchen is always a place that people gravitate towards and you're just kind of like packed in this tiny little kitchen, like my kitchen. Everyone's packed in my whole house if I have people over. I'm thinking about having people over. I'm like, should I have a New Year's thing? Should I have people over for New Year's? The next time I plan to have people over is for my second annual pina colada party, which I had last year. It was a hit. I loved it. People love pina coladas. So I'm going to have a second pina colada party. But should I have a New Year's party in my, in my small kitchen? I've noticed that whitewashing brick is still happening. Sometimes there is really bad brick. I agree. But I never think it should be whitewashed. I do not like that look. I think if you're going to make your brick white, just paint it white. That looks so much better to me. The whitewash looks so bad. It's kind of funny. People are whitewashing this type of stone. And we just installed this type of stone fresh in our lake house. I helped my dad. My dad and I actually worked on this project together where we redid the entire fireplace. And I think it turned out really nice. And we installed that stone. It almost looks like it belongs in the lake house. And all of the wood that used to be where the stone is, we saved it all. And when we update the kitchen, we're going to use that wood as like a backsplash for this open shelving moment that this is the inspo photo that I want to incorporate. Because I do think some open shelving is nice. I, I like open shelving. But anyways, the whitewash. No, don't do that. Just paint it white. Sometimes, sometimes it is necessary to paint the brick because it could be so bad, but just paint it. I don't like the wash. I don't like lime wash. I don't like whitewash. Like, wh why are we washing? Not into it. Benji. Benji Plant. You know Benji Plant. Also featured on Check Out This Fucking Home. Also my YouTube friend. He actually invited me to his potluck Friendsgiving. And he actually invited Kate and I. And we were supposed to go. And I was so ill. And then I saw it on his story. And I was, I, I was even more bummed. But anyways, Benji. I said, Benji, buddy. <laughs> what are you not doing in 2024 design-wise? And he actually had a really good answer that I haven't really heard of before and I also agree with. Benji is over. I also am over. I agree with this. Wabi Sabi being a trend and an aesthetic, if that makes sense. There's so much Wabi Sabi mass-produced items from Zara Home, H&M Home, CB2, you know, all of the above. The whole point of Wabi Sabi is finding the beauty in the natural shape of an object. And specifically, he talks about the imperfections that occur over time with these items. That's basically what Wabi Sabi is. And now we're kind of taking that term and that style and mass producing it, which doesn't really make sense because it's because the whole point of Wabi Sabi is the natural imperfections and shapes and character of an item. For example, he mentioned a bonsai tree you know, the weird shape of a bonsai tree or, you know, an old distressed coffee table with watermarks, which we talked about, which we love. But now all the mass produced companies are creating inauthentically distressed items just to like replicate this. But to sign off on Benji's wise words, let your home age with you, let your items age with you instead of buying them already like that. Unless it's vintage, then that's different. Let people stand on your furniture. I don't know why I like that. I Growing up, my parents didn't have strict rules in that way. And we love to turn on music and dance. <laughs> We're a big dancing family. And we like to like hop up on the ottoman. And as kids, 
We used to just like rough around the furniture and I just like that. It's not even always about the look. It's just like about the like the feel and the comfortability in your home. And I don't know. You, you get what I'm saying. Even though one time I did do like a coffee table flip. I like flipped on a coffee table because I was like showing off my dance moves or something. And I I straight up broke my shin but I was in the theater at the time. I was in a play. I think I was in The Wizard of Oz. I was playing a munchkin. And I did not want to drop out of the play because it was my calling to be in that play, to be a munchkin. And so I didn't go to the hospital. I should have. I definitely like chipped it because to this day, if I like touch my shin right here, it like kind of like sends like a spring. And you can like tell something's off. Whoa, going off tangent. I've been going off tangents in these uh in these last uh sit downs it's fine okay moving moving along my friend caroline turner she's an interior designer in chicago we actually became friends because she started booking me as a prop stylist on some of her jobs and now we're friends you know work buddies but anyways i was like caroline <laughs> oh i'm starting all the caroline what are you not doing for your clients i guess we have a real interior designer right here not that you know we're all not I don't know what we are, interior creators. But anyways, I was like, what is one trend you will not be participating in for your clients in 2024? And she said quartz, which I've been saying forever. But also, I recently read an article that is saying quartz is actually really bad for people. The people that are manufacturing man-made stone, it's killing people. Read this article. We should do a whole video on this. It's actually quite disturbing. And that's also just why you shouldn't have quartz because there's many reasons now. It's not only not good looking, TBH, it's not good to be produced. Read this article. I'll link it down below. Arvin Olano, my YouTube pal, you probably all know who he is. And I have been watching his stuff for a bit now. And he's just so sweet. We're, we're friends. We actually met once in person at um, an art gallery thing. But we've been chatting. We, we're like, we should all get together. But also, Arvin has an insane rug collection. I think from Rugs USA. Wait, yeah, from Rugs USA. If you haven't seen this rug collection, it's really, really good. I was so impressed. Not that I wouldn't be impressed by his stuff because I really like his style. But um, anyways, Arvin Alano, I said, hey, Arvin, <laughs> I gotta stop prefacing it like this. What are you not doing in 2024? Huh? What's a trend? What's a trend you dislike? You know, he also talks about stuff he doesn't like and like on his channel. Um, so if you don't know him, go check him out. But I'm, I feel like you do. And Arvin said, which I 100% agree with. I think Arvin and I have a lot of similar opinions on things. He's not going to be doing any uh, DIYs, specifically paint DIYs or DIYs that flip, you know, old furniture. Arvin has a really nice appreciation for antiques. He's always antiquing and searching for good vintage finds. But I do think DIY just doesn't look good anymore, even on a budget. I think if you have a very small budget, you can still thrift something or do something vintage instead of a DIY. So Arvin will not be DIY paint flipping furniture. Not that he ever really did, but neither am I. Because I'm here for the people on, you know, interior design YouTube to also tell me what to do. There's so much to learn. We need to do a dinner with, you know, all of the interior designers. I don't know what we could do, but it's a small group of us and we're all friends. And I didn't start out in the best terms on here because I made a video called There's No Unique Interior Designers on YouTube. Not knowing the like community or that we would be friends. Luckily, it didn't really bite me in the ass. I should take down that video maybe. I also did a video like reviewing Lone Fox's home. But at this point, it's like we're friends. So it's just weird that I'm like, I don't know, reviewing his stuff. Anywho, did you like this video? <laughs> That's it. Hopefully the bangs banged. I didn't touch my hair. That's pretty fun. Actually, I have not been touching my hair lately because of the bangs we owe it all to kate um who bullied me <laughs> she's 
She didn't bully me, but she did make an appointment that was non-refundable, which I guess I still didn't have to get bangs. But now I'm like, Kate, I guess I owe you everything. But what if I hated them? Then would we not be friends anymore? That is a question we'll never know. I'm going back to East Lansing. I went to Michigan State, and I'm going to East Lansing because I have a baby shower of one of my friends who live, is from East Lansing. And my other friend – well, this story is getting a little confusing. But anyways, I'm going to the – I lived in Campbell Hall at Michigan State. So if you went there, you know it's like one of the oldest dorms. It is maybe the oldest dorm at Michigan State. But we're going to go eat in the cafeteria. Because that's what we used to do. We used to like get smoothies and like hang out in the cafeteria as everyone in college does. But I haven't been back there since I graduated. So when I fly in to Michigan, we're doing that. I'm going to baby shower, going to Michigan State, and then heading to uh, the lake house to see the fam for Christmas. And I was going to film my dad. My dad makes a 12 course meal every Christmas. For the 12 disciples, we're not even um, really religious, <laughs> but it's like an all seafood meal. Starts off with clam sauce and then calamari. The first two courses are pasta, so it actually does fill you up a lot. Um, but then we have like bacala and we have schmelz and like all these other like weird fishes and like anchovies and there's a whole thing. And I was going to film it. I was like, Dad, I want to film this. Maybe not necessarily for my YouTube channel, but just to have for memories um, but he pre-makes a lot of the sauces because it's a lot of work. And he was like, I filmed it for you. So maybe I'll get – <laughs> I should get that footage and you can watch it. Because I was like, wait, you filmed this? I'm so curious what this footage is. Like, what? how did he film it? But I appreciated it. I was like, Dad, I can't use that footage off your iPhone. He has, like, the oldest iPhone. But anyways, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Um, that's it. See you next week maybe. We'll see. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see some of my dad's cooking. I'm going to I'm gonna put some stuff up on it because it's good. It's good. So excited. Clams are one of my favorite foods and tomatoes. So clam sauce is ideal. All right. Goodbye.